Hello guys. So today we will learn about the DST AM modulated signal. Okay. So as you can see, I have already written the code. It is a very quite simple program, and it is almost 90% same as AM signal modulation what we have done in last class. Okay. As you have learned in your theory also, DST signal. Is nothing but a AM signal with a suppressed carrier. Carrier means the here uh, in AM signal we were using one plus one constant we are using, okay. But in DSSC signal we will not use that constant here in coding or in theoretical uh, formula. Formula also you can see because of that we will save some power, okay. We will save some power and in modulation the efficiency will increase. Ultimately, our goal is to increase the efficiency of the modulated signal. Means the information we are passing through. Okay. In radio communication or any other communication, our efficiency will be increased. So when you will solve the formula of efficiency for AM modulation, you will find it has only 33% efficiency. Okay. But in case of DSSC signal, it efficiency increased from 33% to 50%. And in further in our next class, we will see the SSC signal, single sideband signal. So that efficiency of those things will increase to 100%. Okay, so for if there we have to transmit some modulated signal over a communication where we, we need a good efficiency, then we use this DS SSC carrier okay so this is the use of this and uh, for uh, the code code what I have taught you in last class experiment that uh, this is our FM which is of 10 Hertz this is our FC which is of 500 Hertz AM which is of 1 volt you can say AC is of 2 volt time span means it will go to 0 to 5 Okay, 0 to 0.5 with the spam of 0 0.001. Okay, and uh, WM we can call 2 pi FM. Okay, Means this is the message signal angular frequency. Every comment I have written here with the code so you can understand it. And code is quite similar with AM modulation. Okay, see this is our MT signal, means message signal, which AM cos omega MT into t, t is the time span and omega m is the angular frequency. So this is our message signal and then we have cg, this is our carrier signal with higher frequency. Then we have s1 which will be our dssc am signal which is nothing but mt into cg and then we are plotting this okay so for plotting we use for subplot command and 4 is because we are plotting four signal so first we need four rows so that four row is total number we will mention it as four and this one is because this whatever we are going to plot will come into first column first row okay and this yeah, image is first means the waveform is first and then we will plot so we are plotting first our message signal which is empty and title we have given modulated and message signal okay then on second number second row we will plot cg title is carrier signal and on third row we will plot this modulated signal s1 s1 and then we will compare it with the ac plus mt and minus ac minus mt means the upper limit and the lower limit of message signal and then you will see the variation this why we have done this because in last class also we have done this because we we can easily observe the highest amplitude and the lowest amplitude of the modulated signal what we are transmitting okay but in case of dssc signal you will see this transmitted carrier power it's overall power and uh, amplitude everything will be less okay so we can see in our waveform 
to title is under modulated signal okay no problem then we will come to the modulate demodulation of this is am i have written this is dhsp signal and then again we will use this carrier signal to product with our modulated signal which will be represented by r1 and as i have done in last class butterworth filter of order 2 we are using for low pass filter and this filter we are passing uh, through some filter function and we will save this signal in mr okay and we will plot this in our fourth subplot okay this mr one demodulated signal okay so this is our code for dsst signal you can run this code from here Here you can see I got the waveform of all the signal. Okay, so here our unmodulated one is the signal. This is our carrier signal. As you can see, its uh, carrier frequency is quite high. That's why it is such a zigzag. And here, see, you will see the DSSP signal. Okay, so this upper line and this lower line is AC plus MT and minus AC minus MT. Okay. So you can see the difference between them. So that's why I told you that we are transmitting very lower power signal. Okay. The amplitude is also low. Everything is low. So this is quite, and in our AM modulated signal, in our last class, what we have done, so you can see this, this one, the inside uh, DS, uh, signal will be, it will cover the whole area of this means ac plus mt by uh, or till minus ac minus mt this whole area it will cover but here in the ssp signal it's not it's very less in power and then we have got this demodulated signal okay in the output okay so this is our through the coding part so this is your experiment number three through the coding part and uh, here only I will show you the simulation part because simulation is also important in this and we have uh, we need to do the simulation to understand the simulation to understand all this coding okay in last class I have already designed one AM simulator okay for modulation and demodulation also and uh, here uh, I will just change in the circuit only I will change so I have already opened, I have told you that how to open this simulink part, you have to go to this home and you have to click on this simulink button and then you will, you can open a blank project and then from there you start building this block, for building this block just double click here and whatever the input you need, signal generator, you can type and you can use this signal generator, just click on here and it will come here. Or you can go to this library browser. From there, you can drag and drop this all these blocks here, whatever I have used. And I have the, uh, uh, given this inside in manual. Also, I have uh, given all the parameters what we are using inside the signal generator, everything. So we haven't changed anything from last class. Okay, I will delete this one. So we haven't changed anything from our last class. I have opened that same design, but I have deleted one constant we have used in case of AM signal. Here in last class, if you will see the video, you will see one AM uh, constant we have used. But here we are not using that. We are directly done the product of message signal and carrier signal in here. Okay. And this carrier signal is going to this scope and this message signal is also going to this scope. Product signal this what we called as AM signal or you can say DSSP signal it is also going into this scope okay then we have used some saturation here saturation one you can see this is nothing we had just set some limit okay a 
upper limit and the lower limit for this okay then we have the, here comes the demodulation part what we have used this is the butterworth filter or you can say analog filter design in this so we have used butterworth filter filter type is low pass okay we can use high pass also band pass also band stop also according to our requirement filter order is 3 pass is frequency is 50 radian per second okay it is in radian okay i have kept 50 you can try it on 60 or 100 depend okay what you need as pass rate okay so this is some constant then again sum and we are giving as gain because after the butterworth okay lpf signal will be our demodulated signal will be very low in amplitude so that's why we have given some gain here okay, because we need some good amplitude of that pre-modulated signal so means if you are hearing something in your radio and it will come into very low volume okay very low pitch then you can't able to hear it that's why we have amplified it by giving some gain into it okay so there is not much anything changed from uh, last class so this is your experiment number four. Just try to run it once. Run it again. Just run it, and then uh, you have to wait for some time, and then uh, go to this scope to see the our modulated carrier and this AM signal. You can see modulated carrier and this AM signal here. Okay like i have shown in last class also and then you can go to this scope and you can see this saturated signal after modulation what you got because we put some saturation in lower limit that's why we are not getting this lower limit value okay we are only getting we have put saturation limit to zero this lower limit that's why we are getting zero okay low limit we only need upper limit so with this saturation signal we have applied some butterworth lpf filter and we got our t modulated signal but this t modulated signal amplitude is very low okay and we have tried to give some gain into it so you can see on this left hand side this amplitude is varied okay amplitude is somewhat varied this is 0 0.12, this is minus 1.2, minus, minus is because we have added some constant in it. If we will remove this constant, then it will be removed. So it's okay, we just need the frequency one. Okay, thank you. So this is how we do the demodulation of TSSP signal. This is somewhat you can say, there is, uh, this frequency is lower, uh, sorry, amplitude is lower but our power we save some power we increase the efficiency that's why we use TSSP signal so this was your experiment number three and four it is quite easy won't take some uh, more than 15 20 minutes to design these things or more than half an hour so try to do this and uh, include all these things in your lab report all the coding part also or the simulation part also like i have given in your last class lab manual i have shown you how you have to write your lab report for this okay so thank you for today that's all we will meet in next class